Hi, I'm Bobby, and today I want to share with you some more cool visual effects. We're going to create a 3D scene filled with glowing cubes, and we're going to do this with the magic of 3JS. 3JS is more than just a library. It's a bridge to the future of 3D content on the web. I've been following 3JS and really fascinated by its capabilities and the vibrant community behind it constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible online. So for this adventure, I've set up my trusty VS code with a live server plugin. And you fire that up by clicking down here. Once it's installed, you click go live and you're good to go. And Chrome. So let's dive into the heart of the project, which is the index HTML. Not much going on here. We set this up and we forget it. Um, all of what's really interesting is going to happen in this index.js file. Here. We've got everything organized into sections. We're importing what we need. We set up our scene. We add stuff to our scene. We animate it. And then some additional stuff at the bottom here. All right, so um, let's get started. This is what our scene looks like so far. Um, let's refresh that so the connection is good again. Let's see, that's really a red cube. Sorry, I meant to say that was kind of a nice blue cube. <clears throat> Great. What we're going to do is take this single cube, change it to a wire cube, and then fill the scene with that, adding fog so that uh, it kind of fades out in the background there. Um, we'll also add the orbit controls so that we can move around the scene like so. And I think that's just about it. Oh yeah, the post-processing. We'll make sure to add the glow, the glowy effect. So these it kind of gives it a retro look. So I've got my cube here. Um, let's change that back to green. And we could just say, hey, make this wireframe, and we'd, we'd be good, right? Wireframe equals true. But unfortunately, it's not that easy because uh, it's making a wire out of every triangle, and we've got these extra lines that we don't want. So we can't just do wireframe equals true. The solution is going to be uh, let's see, we're going to create a const edges equals new three dot edges geometry and we pass in, we pass in the geometry and then we're going to const um, lines box equals align segments and uh, align basic material. That's interesting. And I'm just going to go with a mesh standard material. Maybe mesh basic material would work too. Oh yeah, it would, and it's brighter. It's nice. Oh, I like that. So there's our there's our box. Um, I'm just gonna return that as I wrap that in curly braces and a function decoration declaration, or a function decoration in this case. And now I've got this. Uh, create box method or get box. I don't need the ge geometry and the material inside the function to get ever, to get recalled every time. I guess I don't really need this edges geo in here either. And if I format, by the way, to format it's shift alt F. Okay, great. So I've got a box, but I want many boxes. So to do that, I'll define the number of boxes, const num boxes, equals 1500. Nope, let's start with mm, 50. And then just do a simple for loop. For, thanks. Um, yeah, that's a great start. Get a box, add it to the scene. And this is the, let's, let's call that radius. Actually, radius isn't really good, range. Range is better, but I'm going to say radius because we're going to convert this to spherical coordinates. Radius equals 10. And then we can replace all the 10s here 
with a radius, and then r radius times 0 0.5. Oh no, not and. Radius minus, so does that makes sense. I'm saying get me a number between 1 and 10 and subtract 5 from that. So it's going to give you a number between negative 5 and 5. And this is what it looks like. Boom, exploded, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Why not? Because box is not defined. Oh my god. The freaking box is not defined. Fine. Hey! Okay, we need to be able to move out around our scene now. Let's import the orbit controls. Um, orbit controls. Come on. VS Code, give me, give me a... Okay, forget it. Thank you. Um, and in this case, I, in my index HTML, I've defined JSM. So I just need to use JSM here. Isn't that nice? All right, and we'll put it right below our scene setup. Const controls equals new three dot orbit controls. Thank you. And I wanna enable damping and make a damping factor of 0 0.1. Okay, now oh, it blew up. Why? Oh, I don't need three dot orbit controls, just orbit controls. Can I use three dot orbit controls and just skip the import? Wouldn't that be crazy? No, you can't. Thanks anyway. So now I can pan around. Now, I'm not really feeling that damping factor very much. And that's because I need to add this controls. Uh, whoops, controls dot update. What, why aren't you giving me update? I don't know why you're not giving me update, but that's what I need. And now, see how it, it kind of has that tweening effect, of that, ge that s gentle tweening? Let's move back a little bit, like so. Okay, now we can see our boxes. Not quite this, but we're getting there, right? Um, I'm really excited that, that they look so vibrant. Um, anyhow... Um, we want to add some random rotation to the boxes. We also want to use spherical coordinates. Let's start with the spherical coordinates. And for this, I'm simply going to grab the code because uh, I, I don't have it sitting around in my head. The code is in here. It's this get spherical, uh, sorry, get random sphere point method. So I just copied that and I'm going to paste it here and talk about it. It's a helper function. It lives right above the, the definition of our geometry. Get random sphere point takes a radius. And um, this is going to make more sense once we see it. Why don't I just show you and then I'll, I'll blah, blah, blah about it after. So thank you very much. Call the method and deconstruct its, its return value, which is just x, y, and z. I could have made this uh, vector three, but meh, whatever. And then uh, set the position, box.set position. And let's see what we get. Do you see a difference? I'm not really seeing a difference, but if I up the number of boxes to 500, I think I'll see a dif difference. Um, let's see that difference again. So here's, here's 500 boxes. See how they're kind of in a big box shape? Sorry, did I say 500 boxes? I meant 1,500 boxes. See, it's a big box. And now if I get that sphere position again and set the position, see how it's, um, it's rounder? It's a big ball now. That's the desired effect. Um, let's make it 500 for now. Increase the radius to 15. Um, I'm going to decrease this so that there's more toward the center. If I made it like that, they tend to kind of cluster around the middle. I don't like that. That's why we, we uh, kind of push them away from the middle a little bit. But just a little bit. Kind of like that. Yay. We want to rotate each of the boxes randomly. That's fun and easy to do. So why don't we do that? Um, a really hacky quick way to do it is just to say box dot rotation uh, rotation dot set 
and then just pass in that x the oh you could do math.random or just do that x y z that we got from the random sphere point and voila chaotic <laughs> not great looking either you know one reason it's not great is because the boxes way in the back are just as bright as the boxes way in the front and 3js has this wonderful fog which is going to make this look less like that let's see do five that's pretty good it's pretty intense though maybe a three five um what i want to do is increase the radius a lot let's make it 25 oh and now i need more boxes oh i meant i have changed the wrong value here 25 that's pretty good. In fact, I think that's good enough. And I can jack up the number of boxes. Oh, that's too many. That's almost right. Okay. Just set in value and see how they look. Mm, that's better. Is that better? Ah, that's good too. Now we can increase the number of boxes. Because we got to increase the number of boxes. Um, I want the whole scene to rotate kind of like this really gradually oh that's getting there it's getting there um to do that uh i, I could rotate the camera I, I i don't know how to do that i think it's kind of complicated instead i'm going to add each of these boxes to a box group that i'm going to create right here const box group equals new three dot group and i'm going to add that to the scene now inside our animate method i can just say uh, box group dot rotation dot y plus equals blah 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 um not rotation x x is kind of interesting too though and now we just kind of orbit around in there what i prefer to do though is say box group dot user data i'm using this user data user data object because i don't want to accidentally clobber any of the methods or properties of the box group User data is like a little safe place to jam your own custom functionality. And, th and this is how I'll define it. I'll say like that box, box group dot user data dot update equals this. I like to pass in T instead. Uh, and I've got this T here, this value of T. It's a timestamp kind of. Why don't I call it that then? Time stamp like that. Okay. Voila. And now I can use that timestamp. So equals timestamp. This is going to be messy. The first, first, first time through. Time 0 0.01. And just kill that. Oh my god. I am so sorry. I, I need to comment that out. Okay. Whew. Okay. Now what was, I, what was I up to again? Let's make that smaller. Uh, that's still too big. That's pretty good. And do the same for rotation Y. The reason we're using timestamp is I just think it's more flexible than just hard coding the value. Um, in fact, uh, no, that's just the box. Okay. Oh boy, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, I want each of the cubes to rotate on their own. How am I doing on time though? Oh, we're over time. I think I might do that another time. For now, I just want to add the glow and call it a day. To do that, we're going to use the post-processing effects, post-processing effects that are built into 3JS. So um, render pass gives you what you, you already have, and the, and the bloom pass is the, the coolness. So um, I'm setting up the... I'm not going to go over all the stuff. Just copy and paste this in to get glow, okay? The way you do that, I've added it in, I've saved it, I don't see it. The way to do that is to change the animate method so that you're no longer rendering, but you're using the composer instead. There you have it. I think that's a little intense. Uh, so I'm going to dial back the, blow, uh, the glow a little bit. That's pretty good. I wonder if setting anti-alias to true would help. Let's, let's have a look. I think it helps. And I think I love it. Um, stuff to experiment with. Um, use a different material. 
on these guys, vary the color, uh, explore lighting effects like, like here. Um, I think that's a really cool effect. And that might look really nice with the wireframes as well. Um, you could use this after image post-processing, which I think is okay. It's a little heavy handed. You could explore adding some background stuff to it. Where was I? Here I am. Yeah. Uh, if we had more time, we could explore all that, but that's it for today. Um, we created this cool visual effect and we crafted it with accessible tools, proving that the wonders of 3D on the web are within reach for anyone curious enough to explore. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more adventures in creative coding. Share your thoughts in the comments, your ideas and questions are the sparks that could ignite our next project. Thanks for watching and keep pushing the limits of what you can create and never stop coding. Thank you.